Hi everyone, my name is Elijah and today we are going to learn the basics of working with spreadsheets. As you can see, we have Microsoft Excel open on our desktop. And the first thing we need to look at is the window layout of Microsoft Excel. The topmost part is the title bar, starting from the quick access toolbar on the left side. And on the right side, we have the usual three buttons, minimize, maximize, and close. Under them, we have the menu ribbon, having all the tabs and the groups of commands under them. Below the menu ribbon, we have the formula bar. We have the name box, and we shall see the functions of these two a bit later on in the video. Coming to the main part where we work, that's the working area. A bit different from Microsoft Word, in Microsoft Excel, the working area is divided into columns and rows, which intersect to, to make cells. Going to the right side, we have the vertical scroll bar. And uh, at the bottom, we have the horizontal scroll bar. In Microsoft Excel, we deal with sheets, and so we have the sheet tabs at the bottom left side of the worksheet. Under that, at the very bottom of the window, we have the status bar. So that is the window layout of Microsoft Excel. In Microsoft Excel, we work with numerical data that is usually entered in the cells. To work with any data that is entered in your cells, we will need to refer to each cell uniquely. A cell is referred to by its column letter and the row number. The column letter and the row number make up the cell reference. There are three types of cell references in Excel depending on the situation you are dealing with. The first one is the relative cell reference. An example, the cell in which I have clicked is cell E4. Because it is in column E and in row number 4. So E4 is a relative cell reference. The second type of cell reference is absolute cell reference. In some situations, we will need to use absolute cell references as we shall look at later on. An example of a cell reference that is absolute is dollar sign E dollar sign 4. This is the same reference of the same cell but put in the absolute cell reference format. You realize we have the dollar signs before the column letter and the row number. The third kind of cell reference is mixed. In mixed cell reference, either only the column letter or only the row number has a dollar sign. We move ahead to look at how to enter data into a spreadsheet. The cell in which I have clicked is cell A1. I will use the example of students' scores to help us see how we can enter data into a spreadsheet. When you have student data, you will normally start maybe with the names of the students. And then you can have, let's say, their scores for a certain subject like English, another subject like mathematics, another subject like science, and so on and so forth. As I have been typing in the cells, to move from one cell to the next, I have been pressing the tab key on my keyboard. As I press the tab key, the active cell pointer moves to the next cell. Once you get to the last 
you can press the enter key to take you to the next row where for instance you can enter the details for your first student let's say John Doe with a score of 80 in mathematics 70 in English mathema sorry English mathematics and science 40 enter so so far we have entered the column headings names English mathematics and science we have also entered the name of our student John Doe these are words which we will not be able to manipulate mathematically. So these that are entered in a spreadsheet which you cannot manipulate mathematically are called labels. That brings us to the types of data that can be entered in a spreadsheet. And the first one as I've mentioned is labels. The second one is values. Values are numbers, dates, and other numerical data which we can manipulate mathematically. For instance, the max for English 80, the max for mathematics 70, and the max for science 40 are values. The third type, third type of data that can be entered in a spreadsheet is a formula. A formula is a mathematical expression that makes a relationship between several cells. For instance, if we were to find the total score for John Doe in the cell E2, we will need a formula. In spreadsheets, formulas must begin with the equal sign. We can have an opening bracket and then I'll express my mathematical relation between the marks for English, Mathematics and Science to arrive at the total. And that is an addition relation. So I'll have the cell references of the cells containing the scores of John Doe with the operator for addition. Now the English score is in cell B2 plus Mathematics in cell C2 and lastly plus Science is in cell D2. I can close my bracket and when I press enter the total score for John Doe is displayed. The fourth type of data that can be entered in a spreadsheet is a function. Just like a formula, a function establishes relationship between cells. The difference being functions are inbuilt in the spreadsheet program. In this case, Microsoft Excel has very many functions, but we shall go and look at just a few for this uh, course. For that, let us add another student, Jen Do, and let's give her marks like 80, 90, and 70. The same way we would like to have the total for Jen Do, but in this case we would like to use a function. The relation between the scores for Jen that will give us the total is a summation, addition. And so, as usual again, functions and formulas must start with equals. The function used to do addition has the word the name sum we open a bracket and inside these brackets we shall give the reference for the range of cells containing the scores the first cell is b3 we shall separate that using a colon and give the last cell which is d3 and when we close the bracket and press enter, we have the total score for Gen Doe. So those are four types of data entered in a spreadsheet. Labels, 
like names and column headings, values which are numbers like our scores, formulas which are mathematical relations that are used to make relations between cells like the one we used for John Doe and we can see it in the formula bar and lastly functions which are inbuilt formulas like the one we used to get the total for Jen Do, and we can see it in the formula bar. Therefore, we find the function of the formula bar to be a place where you can view a formula or function that you typed in a certain cell for the purpose of either editing or correcting an error that you had made. For the name box, you realize that once you click in any cell in the spreadsheet, the cell reference is shown in the name box. So that's the function of the name box to display the reference of the currently active cell. So we have just so far looked at one function, that is sum. There are much, much more functions, many, many more functions that are available in Microsoft Excel. Another function that we can apply to the data we have in our spreadsheet right now is to find the average scores for our students. I will designate column F for these results. So for John Doe, to get the average for John Doe using a function, as usual, we will have to start with the equal sign, and the name of the function is average. We open our bracket and give the range of cells containing John Doe's scores. The first one is B2, separated by a colon, and the last one is D2. When we close the bracket and press enter, the average score for John Doe is 63.33. So far, we have looked at sum and average, but there are many, many other functions which can be found under the formulas tab in the menu ribbon. And we have several categories beginning with logical, which can be and, else, if, and so on and so forth. We have text functions to deal with labels date and time functions that deal with dates and time, lookup and reference, mathematics and trigonometry, and many other functions. We proceed to another aspect of spreadsheets, which is worksheet data management. The data that is entered in a spreadsheet can be managed using various tools. First of these tools is data entry using forms. In the beginning of the video, we have seen that you can enter data in a spreadsheet by directly typing into the cells. This sometimes can be this sometimes can be inconvenient. To make the work easier, Microsoft Excel offers forms to be used to enter data. How can you come up with a form to help us enter data in such a spreadsheet? I'll bring you to the quick access toolbar, which is the left part of the title bar. And we have a drop down arrow, which if you click, you will find the command for more commands. When you click it, the Excel options dialog box appears and I want us to focus on choose commands from. On that menu, we will click all commands so that we can have access to all the commands in the box below it. And I will have a scroll down to F where we are finding form. Once you click on it, we click add 
it appears in the box on the right and we can click OK. So coming back to the quick access toolbar, we can now see the icon for form. Once you type the column headings for your data in your spreadsheet, when you click form, a form will appear showing the column headings with the boxes after them in which you can type your data. The forms can also be used to view the data and even delete or do editing of your data. The second worksheet data management tool is sorting. It is the arranging of data in a particular order. In Microsoft Excel, data can be arranged using one of the columns in the data. For instance, we can arrange our data according to the names, the English scores, the mathematics scores, science, total, and average. The arrangement must be in an order. For instance, the names can be arranged alphabetically from A to Z or Z to A. The scores can be arranged in ascending order or descending order. To sort data in a worksheet, you first highlight the data by dragging from the top left to the bottom right cell in your data, including the column headings. You go to the data tab and click sort. In the sort dialog box, you have the sort by option where you will select the column by which you want to arrange your data. In our case, let's say the total. Sort on the values and in the order we can have smallest to largest that is ascending or largest to smallest that is descending. For our case, we would like to get the data sorted from largest to smallest to depict the performance of our students from the best performer to the least performing. Once we have that selected, we click OK. You can realize our two students have been switched positions with Jane Doe with a total of 240 coming above John Doe who has a total of 190. The third data management tool is filtering. Filtering is a feature in Excel that is used to only display the data meeting the user's requirements. For instance, we can have our data filtered according to the scores of science. And we can say we want only those with scores above 50 in science to be displayed. First, we shall come to the data tab and click filter. Drop down arrows will appear at every column. We will come to the science drop down arrow and once we click it, a menu appears on which we can set our parameters. The most important for us will come to the number filters in which we can set a condition. Let's say greater than or equal to 50. Once we click OK, you realize that John Doe, who had 40, 40 in science, is now hidden. So that, so that is how the filter tool works. The fourth data management tool is data validation. To do our data validation, I will revert from the filter tool to have full view of my data and in this case data validation helps you the user to ensure that entries made into your worksheet are correct without errors. What kind of errors can be entered in a worksheet? For instance, in the cells where we need scores, erroneously we can enter letters. 
or in other words we can even have scores that are not valid for instance the maximum score for any student in a particular subject is 100 when a score above 100 is entered in a cell it should be rejected to help our spreadsheet do that we will highlight the cells to contain our scores we will come to the data tab and click on data validation a dialog box for data validation appears where we have three tabs settings input message and error alert in the settings tab we set the criteria or the condition here we would like to set our values to only accept from 0 to 100. In the allow drop down menu, we will choose whole number. In the data menu, we will choose between. Our minimum is 0 and our maximum is 100. We move on to the next tab, that is the input message. This will be displayed whenever the validated cell is clicked. The message will have a title, for instance, valid entry. And the message will contain what we expect from the user as input. For instance, we can say, Please enter a score between 0 and 100. We move to the last tab that is the error alert. This is a message that will be displayed when an erroneous entry that does not conform to our criteria is entered in a validated cell. It will have a title, for instance, error, wrong entry. In the message, we can give the user a description of the error or we can still emphasize what is required from the user. For instance, you can say the entry is invalid. Please enter a score between 0 and 100. Once we do those three, we click OK. Notice that once we click in any of the cells we had highlighted for validation, then the input message is displayed. Valid entry is the title. Please enter a score between 0 and 100 is the message. If we try to enter 200 as a score, then the spreadsheet will display to us the error message with the title error wrong entry and the message the entry is invalid Please enter a score between 0 and 100. Once we click retry, then we can repeat our entry, but this time having the valid data entered. The last tool in worksheet data management is subtotals and grand totals. This is a tool that is meant to work with data that has subsets. Subsets can be thought of as categories. In our case, if we add other two students to our data and have the students be placed in classes, then the classes can be regarded as categories. We can therefore manipulate this data in terms of the categories like classes. On adding our two students, we can have Mary 
do with the scores we can have another student jerry do with the scores 70 80 and 50 to apply the totals for the other two students we click in the cell with the total and drag from the bottom right corner this will copy the formula or function from the cell to the other cells in the same way we will apply the average for the other two students we will add another column between names and english by right clicking in the english column and choosing insert where we are going to have our class we will have two classes with two students each our first class shall be east and our second class shall be west for us to work with this data we must sort the data according to the column containing the categories in our case by having the two students in the same class following each other our list is already sorted so the next thing to do is to highlight our data including the column headings coming to the data tab and clicking subtotal again we have the subtotal dialog box in which we are going to go through a number of settings at the very top we have at each change in here we need to select which column is our category so for our case we have class in the second option we have the function to be used in manipulating our data i would like for the spreadsheet in this case to give me the average for the class and therefore help us compare the performance of these two classes so i will use the average function and this function i want it to be applied on the average column and so add subtotal two i will tick average column once we do that we can click ok now excel will add some rows in the data to accommodate the subtotals in this case the sub average and the grand total in this case the grand average so we can see that east had an average of 73.33 that is coming from the average of jen doe and john doe while west has an average of 68.33 being found by averaging Mary Doe and Jerry Doe. And overall, the two classes have an average of 70.833. Those are five tools you can use to manage data in a spreadsheet. Spreadsheets are a good tool to use for the presenting of data in a graphical way for that reason one of the features in spreadsheets is charts to put your data into a chart or to generate a chart from your data you first highlight all your data including the column headings and in this case i'm only interested in the names the classes and the scores so after highlighting your data come to the insert tab in the charts group you will have the various commands you can use to work with charts i will go for a column chart and in this case i'll go for the very basic one and once you point on it already microsoft excel displays your chart on clicking on it the chart is entered into your worksheet you can see that a very good pictorial representation of your data is then presented the elements of the chart can be edited for instance we can edit the title 
to represent what our data is about. For instance, we can say these are scores for cut one. The chart will also have a legend showing the colors used to represent the various elements. So English is represented in blue, mathematics in orange, and science in gray. Lastly, we need to know how to print in spreadsheets. To print a spreadsheet, the first thing to note is that we will have to format our lines to appear for them to come out during the printing. Normally, the lines in the spreadsheet are not printable. For us to have the lines appear in our printout, we have to format the borders in our spreadsheet. First, we will highlight the data and in the home tab under the font group on the font icon, we will click the drop down arrow and select all borders. If we wish to also print the chart, we will need to position it in such a way that it will be within the borders of our page. To ascertain that whatever we are printing is within the page and that it will fit on the paper, we can come down to the status bar and change the view from the normal view to the page layout view. Once we click the page layout view, the spreadsheet is displayed in page form. We can then ensure all our data is fitting on the page before we proceed to print on the file menu by clicking print and uh, setting the usual printing settings. Setting the copies we would like to be printed, choosing the appropriate printer to use and lastly clicking print. That has been a brief introduction to spreadsheets. We have gone over the basics. There is much more to be learned in spreadsheets and exercise is always the best teacher. Thank you for watching and we'll talk about something else in our next video.